Good morning, guys. Josh here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So I wanted to really just go through what are my initial thoughts and how you know, Diablo 4 has been for me at the moment as well. I know I've been promising to go through this for quite a bit and I haven't really, you know, done so so far. But, you know, you can see here basically, um, basically you can see me just uh, popping through at the moment and just going through it bit by bit. So basically I've got the, at the moment, the Druid and... We've got a bunch of, you know, mobs trying to attack me and stuff like that as well. But overall, like, you know, I've been enjoying the game. I've been wanting to play Drew for quite a while, as you guys can see. And, yeah, so let me get, give you guys a bit of a thought of it at the time as well. And, you know what, we'll just port to here as well to get rid of this as well. But either way, I'll just give up my thoughts about the game so far. So... With Diablo 4 so far, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It's only early game, so I can't really give you like a deep review of it. Um, there, there's um, very little buttons to use. Um, you can make a build with six buttons or less, which is pretty good. To, pretty good to see as well. There's a lot of different uh, different abilities that you can go for, so you can use this to show up all your abilities that you've got. And also as well, there's also a welcome back to the uh, good old system where you can get, I believe. You can get ranks of abilities from uh, items, which is really, really cool to see. Um, overall, um, also the skill tree system, you can even go You can even go to uh, do the spear skills system. You can see here, you can go through the full uh, POE research. You can actually maximize this as well, but I always keep forgetting how you maximize it. There you go. So it's like it's a full POE system where you can just basically put points anywhere. And I think eventually you're going to have most of these all filled up and good to go. So there's also like, you know, ultimates as well. I believe you can only spend one of these. And I think with my form, of course, you could just use the wear bear form as well to put that in there as well. So with the wear bear build at the moment with what I'm building is that it's mainly built around pulverize. So pulverize can overpower if you remain healthy, which is about 80% health for about 10 seconds. But either way, I've been finding it pretty cool. I've played a rogue and I've played a druid so far. I look forward to playing all the different classes before the beta ends. But overall, it looks very, very fluid. I mean, the only downside is the loading zones if the service does go down because you're, you're basically running against an invisible wall, which can be very, very frustrating when you just want to get to the next piece of content. Um, a lot of the cinematics are easily skippable and they, um, you can advance the conversation by hitting left click over and over again. For you Lost Ark enjoyers, you can finally put F and G to rest to skip through the content. You can now just use the left click instead. Now, overall, um, the items and stuff like that, most of them that drop are for your are for your type. You can easily salvage them and disenchant them at a vendor. Um, you get the town portal, you get basically pretty much instantly as well. So you can go back and forth between town without having to do anything to just drop everything that you've got at the moment. Um, there's no way to really extend the backpack system at the moment. I feel like it does need a bit of extension because a lot of these dungeons and cellars, especially the dungeons, can be a bit long where you have to go in and out, in and out just to vendor. And it's going to get to a point where you're just not going to pick up certain items, basically, as well, which is what's going to end up being. But at the same time, you lose salvage materials for doing so as well. Now, the upgrade system is pretty interesting as well, where you can upgrade items and stuff like that. I guess I would be surprised if you're not upgrading items until you hit, like, level 50 or level 70 or level 100, probably. Or when you get the best tier items that you can't possibly upgrade any further, because it would be pointless to upgrade items that you're going to replace within one or two levels anyway. Um... They've got the uh, old system where there's a let, like you can use your codex. It's like kind of like Sultan Cool's cube back in the Diablo 3 days to implant legendaries on rares, which is pretty good. And to get those codexes, you have to complete dungeons. And I mean, it's a really, really good thing that, you know, you're getting people to explore the world to get legendary codexes to go in there. Now, a lot of people argue against that. A lot of people would be like, oh, they shouldn't force people to explore the world and do that sort of stuff. I think it's a good thing because it means that every piece of content is meaningful, regardless if, you know, regardless or not whether your class needs it or not, you may want to build one of those classes in the future and you'll need to clear that dungeon. Now, overall as well, another cool thing is that the gold is split amongst your characters. So you don't have to get 50k gold if you drew to pay for whatever. It is spread across all your characters, which gives me like, you know, reason to believe it's like kind of like a lost arc system, but it's not forcing you to use ults, okay? The lost arc system kind of force you to use alts if you wanted to get ahead. The Diablo 4 system doesn't seem to force you to make alts to get ahead. But just everything in the gold, the salvage and stuff like that is all shared. So basically, if you get a lot of salvage items on your rogue and you want to play your druid, it is all the salvage items are there ready to go so you can upgrade almost immediately. It might be it might be some, you know, efficiency guide to just use lower level characters to get salvage to start. 
And if you get bored of it, you can play on your main, basically. Um, I'm not terribly too sure how that's going to go. I don't think it's I don't think going to force you to play an alt or play your other characters, basically, as well. Either way, you know, let's get out the skill tree system as well. And also to have talents. So, basically, the talents here as well. Obviously, the druid one you can't get. If you just don't know at this point, the druid one, you have to go to an area in the beta that you can't access, okay? And there's no, like, instant teleport there or anything like that. You have to actually have to, have to walk there. And you have to basically walk through Act 2, which is uh, impossible in the beta. So I assume you basically get a whole bunch of offerings, which you can extend these uh, things to the max. The Rogue has a different system as well of talents, where they get combo points and stuff like that as well. I think it's pretty cool that every single class has their own little talent pool. And I guess I think it's got this from WoW. I think a lot, a lot, of, the, a lot of Diablo 4 is borrowing elements from various other games and see if you can, you know, basically integrate it further as well. Now also as well, they got a separate item here for your quests. So you get all your quest stuff here as well. So you can see here, all these quest items here and your aspects and your consumables. It's like the Whispering Key, for example. The only thing that goes in here is your equipment. Okay, that's pretty much it. Also, gems make a return as well. And gems, I'm going to say, are a bit easier to use now. So with gems, you can combine them at a jeweler right away to a free check and rather than using the Horodric Cube. And also not to mention as well, gem stack, which is an awesome thing to have as well, the gem stack. And last but not least, the uh, options, the menu options. You can switch your monitors if you want to do so as well. You can switch your video cards if you want to do so. Of course, if you're not playing Windows full screen, you can control your refresh rate. Obviously, these things turn on for me as well to give you guys the best performance. You can even decrease your background FPS and your foreground FPS. I keep it at 60 so we can record this because it's at 150 early and it was just completely destroying my uh, thing. Actually, I don't know why these graphics are so high. I wonder why my encoder was getting destroyed. <laughs> I usually put them on medium so uh, that the, uh, my uh, encoder doesn't get overloaded, but okay. That figures out a bit. But you can see here that you can change so much of the options. Like, so much of the options you can change in this area. We're just waiting for the graphics to upgrade. Like, you can go into the sound, put that less as well. And I think I might actually do that because you can hear it's a bit loud. And it also gives you an idea of how the sound's going to be. Hello. So you can hear, you know, people saying hello and stuff like that to see how loud it's going to be. Now, you can also auto-join voice channels. Obviously, no one's going to do that because, you know, especially as streamers, some guys yelling the N-word is probably not relatable for you. You can also get a screen reader. You can also get a male and female reader. You can get TTS as well. And they give you a voice option as well. And basically, they can give you in-game loot sounds. You can get ambient loot, stuff like that. And also, you can get play audio and error. Now, with the gameplay, uh, the save, yep. You can get screen shake, reduce strobing. You know, basically... Pretty much, if you want to change anything, you can change anything here, okay? Like, if you're, if you're colorblind, you can make sure these aren't the same and stuff like that. It's absolutely crazy how much you can change in this game. And also, not to mention as well, you can actually add additional inputs. You can see with the mouse wheel left, you know, I think basically it's designed for everyone at the stage. Now, you can turn on basically a uh, cross-network play. And you can turn all notifications as well. I'm actually going to just turn off all these notifications at the moment. And you can also get your chat bubble opacity. So you can make it invisible. Um, you can also change the chat colors. I'm just going to say at the moment, okay, these guys are all like, you can block people in here as well. These are just probably carried over from my battle tag. And overall, you know, it's a very, very accessible system. And I, you know, I think, I think they've done a really good job on this so far. Now, a lot of people were very, very, uh, I think I got some criticisms as well. Like they were saying that, you know, oh, it's just Diablo 3, you know, upgraded. I'm like, isn't that a good thing that a game actually improves instead of goes backwards? Like that's what I don't get about that criticism. It's like, well, it's good that a game improves. So I think I can say it's Diablo 3 improved. Okay, not Diablo immoral. It's Diablo 3 improved. It's actually approved a better system. They build on the systems that worked previously in Diablo 3. They learned the lessons there as well. And, you know, I think Diablo 4 is going to be a pretty decent game so far, okay? We haven't touched the late game, so I can't be like, it's going to be the best game ever. We haven't even touched the late game. The late game where the supposed best part's going to be. We're only tiptoeing in the early game so far. And the early game's been relatively fun, and I've been enjoying it thoroughly. And that's why I've been playing it basically every weekend. And so guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in Diablo 4 later on my Twitch stream. Peace out. Bye.